Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you another exhibition match stream. Today, we're going to start with a game between Anarchid and Lowry on Wanderlust, which I know I've casted a lot of recently, but it's a good map. Players have been playing it a lot, so of course I'm going to be casting it. So let us begin. So, Wanderlust, probably be familiar by now. It's West side for one player, east side for the other player. Players can start along the east side. Actually, we do see that Anarchid is starting in the more sheltered low area, while Lowry is going for the center. Easier time to expand, but... Actually, I'm not really sure what the downsides of the center area are. I mean, there's defensibility is pretty good. You... If anything comes up here, it's an uphill battle. Inside this area, I suppose you have this one max that's behind, but otherwise I'm not quite sure. I mean... That's downhill from everything else. You are closest to this north expansion or the south expansion for the west side, so in the, that case, I suppose it does make that expansion a bit easier to get into. But we'll see how this works out. So yeah, Anarchid might be going... Well, Anarchid is also going jump bots, while Lowry goes, of course, for heavy tanks. Starting out with Welder, interestingly, he is not going for... Oh, he's going for Panther first. Never mind. Panther first, then Welder. I was mistaken. Puppies first for Anarchid. With a Pyro as well, and a Freaker, for when that's, well... When he needs to have stuff built up in the back of his base, which... Like I said... Well, okay, I guess... There's some amount of defensibility, I mean, the choke points and so forth, but... Yeah, it's gonna be... It's an uphill battle for defense right now. Anyway, Puppy is... Just scouting out. There's not much Puppy can really do against Panther. Effectively, it's just gonna die. I mean, he's gonna die by attacking anyway. Puppies are... Puppies have a depressing existence. They they live only to die. It's kind of like roaches and ticks, but at least roaches and ticks can kill several units in one go. The puppy there barely hit half health in that panther. Didn't have too much of an effect. Anyway, Kodachi coming in on top of this. So Lowry does have a bit of an early advantage for raiding power. There's that power from Anarchid and more puppies as well. He is a bit surprisingly building a lot of puppies early on. I wouldn't expect seeing a lot of puppies until you start getting... How many puppies does he have right now? He has three and more in production. I wouldn't expect a lot of puppies until you get reclaim fields to work with, so the puppies can actually just reproduce for free. I mean, the reclaim great goo mechanic is really nice for puppies, but that's kind of the thing that makes puppies cost-effective. At least, that's as far as I can tell the thing that makes them cost-effective. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's definitely something that works in their favor. Anyway, Pyro is about to try to make some metal scrap for the puppies to feed off of. Not sure how successful that's going to be, because it's running right into Lowry's commander. In fact, I am sure how successful that's going to be, and if he runs into it, not very. But he's going for it anyway! Oh. Actually, Cybernetic Pony pointing out that puppies are good for cost versus heavy tanks, which is interesting to note. Given that he is a very avid jump bot player, I suppose he'd know. And I can see if you have a lot of puppies, I mean, yeah. Three puppies would take out a panther in one go, that's true. Actually, four puppies, because the first one gets killed by the panther's lightning strike. But... See, puppies are, well, it's not too expensive each. 50 metal each. And that's, of course, when they have to be built on their own. And they die in pretty much one shot to everything. But admittedly, these two will be able to get in and get rid of a Kodachi, so, hey, that's something. I mean, the Kodachi, 180 metal, and that was the cost of five puppies. So, at this point, they have not proved themselves. Not in this game, at least. But like I said, once you start getting reclaim piles going, once you get battles in the middle of the map, and the puppies just head off to there and get... A ton of new puppies, they reproduce themselves based on that. That's when I'd say you get into the situation where puppies are cost effective. It's just getting the Rex set up to that point. That's the tricky part, I would think. Especially given how heavy Anarchy has been going for puppies. He's been going for a very puppy heavy strategy. Everything's puppies. He has some moderators, he has some pyros, but almost entirely puppies. The moderators and pyros seem to be just support for the puppies. Pyro going to the north, it's going to be encountering the Kodachi and the Panther, and that's not going to end well for the pyro. It, however, is going to be helping flank... Well, this panther could be going down. The panther, however, should be able to... Okay, the panther could actually going to take out one each, and this other Kodachi is going to take out another. So these puppies don't have much of a chance. They're, they are not going to get into combat. They need to get out of the way. Kodachi misses, hits the terrain instead. So that's one blessing for those puppies there. They're not going to be able to hit the Kodachi yet. It's reloaded, but at this point, Lowry does have a nice positioning here. Anarchid does have to get out of the way. He is distracting a bit with the pyro. Is he gonna move in the he's gonna move in some of the puppies, however, they are being lit on fire. That is not gonna work out for them. Yeah, they kinda got betrayed by their own pyro there. Oh, sorry, that wasn't the pyro, that was a Kodachi. But still, they got 
they got burned. They got burned badly. However, sort of that panther and down it goes. That's one thing. I mean, both sides do have fire. Let's point out, so we will see a lot of units dying that were not directly attacked. Best thing the powerhouse is going for, really. And Kodachi firing at, well, probably the right target, honestly. That moderator is going to be pretty scary, but one shot gets rid of it eventually. Pyro going to try to finish off what it can, but no luck. Cannot get it there in time. A jump in might have worked out okay, but that would have still been a suicide attack. Hindsight, of course, that is what we see there. And Anarchid is now morphing his commander. He went for Recon Chassis, by the way. Lowry went for Recon Chassis with Shotgun only. No other modules. Of course, nowadays, e -Cell is no longer the metagame-defining force it used to be. What with commanders having 4 metal and 8 energy by default. And Anarchid, what did he go for? Actually, forget that. North side, we do have... Laser versus Stardust fight, and Stardust out of range of the Lotus, so that won't help out too much. Pyro is jumping in, gonna get rid of this Lotus without too much issue. Should be able to anyway. The Welder's gonna be here to repair though, it's gonna try its best. And it looks like it was set on fire as well. The Lotus will be able to survive though. And the Stardust does go down to the Kodachis. Kodachi's taking a bit of damage from the Pyro burning up, but it looks like the Lotus will survive. That Welder there making the difference. And now Lowry pushing in for a bit more of a direct attack. I'm not sure he knows where Anarchid's base is. Anyway, Anarchid for the south. I want to see what his commander had. Heavy machine gun and auto repair system, so his commander is definitely going to have... Well, actually, not an advantage in combat right now. It has to heal up first. <laughs> it's got half health. That's not going to help it out too much. And this is what I mean by the puppies. They are not taking... They're not... Well, getting in that many hits, honestly. However, more and more wrecks are getting into Anarchid's territory. Right now, not quite enough to reproduce too many puppies, but still, wrecks are getting in there. And I've got to say, I'm a little bit surprised at the choice of Stardust. Granted, it is a very tanky turret, so that I could see being a reason. It's just... Against heavier units like this, I'm not 100% sure. Admittedly, these are the light units of the Heavy Tank Factory, so... That is definitely something in consideration there. Anyway, Anarchid's commander in a very tight spot here. Can't easily jump out of here. He's going to be set on fire... Only hope being that the Panther did explode and it paralyzed at least one of the Kodachis. So at least that is something that gives Anarchid a bit of breathing room. More Panthers coming in, however. Anarchid's commander should be able to jump away from this once it comes in. The Panthers are moving in and Anarchid's commander will jump away. There we go. Gets hit but not completely stunned out. It One more hit would have stunned it out though. Does not matter. Puppy not able to get in but now we have a wreck field by Anarchid's base. So the cost effectiveness game is going to change up a bit. And his defender going down, Lowry not repairing it, leaving it to die while building another defender instead. At the same time, back to his base, he is continuing to go for a lot of... How many welders does he have? He currently has seven welders, which for heavy tanks is actually not that unusual. That really isn't. Welders, you kind of need them going around the map building everything. Your commander can't be everywhere at once, and they need to be building defenses, or at least just being around with their little laser guns. It's not much, but it's something, and given how expensive the heavy tank factory units are... Having those welders around the map is not a terrible idea. And of course, we see Panthers spam. That's pretty typical. Five Panthers as well. Bearing in mind, of course, that Panthers are getting killed a lot, whereas welders have basically not died this game. Anyways, we see Anarchid does have this wreck field. Not quite his yet. The Panthers going to move in. Going to try to kill his commander, but his commander able to get out of the way in time. And a nice placeholder shot. Stunning two of the Panthers, but unfortunately, no follow up. Anarchid's commander might be able to get in, but it's going to get stunned out most likely. Defenders doing what they can, and the Moderator also finishing off one of the Panthers. Yet another black hole pushed in there. This Panther is completely dead once support units get in there. Where is it? There is the Pyro, but it's not. there isn't a whole lot that can get in. The Defenders are the only thing that there is there, and the Moderator. But eventually, it wins out. That Panther is gone, and Lowry is once again having to rebuild his army. However, he's decided to switch over to Goliath. He, whoa. Okay, this is an earlier Goliath than I would have expected. Normally, you'd expect a transition to Reapers and then into Goliaths once it gets to the late game, but nope. Nine minutes in, although admittedly, nine minutes is pretty late game for 0k, so I'll give him that. But still, nine minutes in, in this rather unusual matchup, we do see a Goliath coming up, and that's actually the only military unit that exists. Oh, this Kodachi as well. It's one of the few military units that exists for Lowry. He has the Kodachi, he has this Goliath. I guess welders must count for military, when it comes to this military cost thing, they must count for that because I do not see any other units on the map for him. Oh, and these two panthers, that's it. And those are 300 metal each, so it's gotta be the welders. 
Anyway, what matters though is that Lowry is basically trying to push in one big unit. At the same time, we have Sumo coming up from Anarchid. So, fight of the heavies, not a big surprise in these factories. I mean, the tank factory, the jump out factory, the amphib factory, they're all kind of utility factories. They don't have a whole lot that's got synergy between them. Unlike, say, Cloak or Shield, where they mainly focus around working together, a bunch of different units that none of them can really single unit spam and kill, or there's no big unit, there's no one big unit that comes in. They're very synergy based factories, but Jump Bot, Heavy Tank, Amphib, arguably Gunship, depending on how you view the power of the Black Dawn, are, synerg are utility factories. They have a few good units to get into, but really they progress into one massive unit. The Sumo, the Goliath, the Grizzly. Admittedly, there is synergy still there. I mean, placeholder especially, with the new change. I mean, placeholder is a pretty new unit, so Jump Up Factory, because of it, has become a much more synergy-oriented factory. Especially with Moderator as well, actually. It's heavier, yes, it's more expensive, but it's also clearly more useful. The old Moderator, I don't recall seeing at all, and the fact that it does deal a bit of damage helps out as well. And a Jack coming in here, just a prelude to that Sumo. And the Sumo is ready, by the way. That is going to be out there. And looks like Anarchid is going to be able to well, push out a bit. His commander upgraded level 2, another auto repair system, and high power servos. Louder's commander, on the other hand, also level 2, auto repair system, and armor. So in combat, it really comes down to how much Anarchid can micro. He has better auto repair, but Loudry has better starting health. And the Jack still going around tearing everything apart. In the north, we have the Sumo has been exposed. The Kodachi is out. As is the Goliath, it is... Well, it's going to be a battle of the Giants here. A battle of the big utility units. And yeah, in case you're wondering, moderators, moderators have damage. 500 damage with a slow effect. Admittedly, it's not much, but yeah, it's there. Sumos, on the other hand, do have very light damage in the Pulse Beam here. Mostly they come from Jump, but yeah, Disruptors do deal damage. It's a very recent change, though. It's like the last week or so, I think, was changed. Maybe a week and a half ago. It's... It's there. Anyway, the Sumo is the big story here. Doing a nice job getting rid of the Kodachis, but the thing is, at this point, Lowry has 45 metal. Anakin is 33. I forgot to point this out sooner. Anakin really has not been consolidating as much in terms of map control. Lowry has been, and it's paying off. Anakin barely even has the North. It's kind of his natural expansion. And... Okay, that was a bit unusual. But... Sumo does go down. Goliath is still open, but Goliath's taking a lot of damage and is on fire right now. Jack coming to try to finish it off. The Kodachi should be able to stop that happening, though, and I'm so curious what the heck blew up like that. What was that nuke-like explosion there? No, anyway. Unless... No, I don't think Goliath has a D-gun. Okay, a little bit bizarre, but anyway, the Goliath is... It is taking a lot of damage. It should be going down. Anakin's commander, however, is... Right in the midst of this, it has gone down, and down goes... Well, soon, likely, will down go the Goliath. Anakin loses his commander like that. That was... That was not the best thing to do. I mean, he's already behind economically, and that is not going to help. No more Goliaths coming in, though. That Goliath has burned to death. And another Sumo coming to replace the old one that died. And now, at this point, this is where puppies would be very useful. This is where... If Anakin has any puppies left on the field, I don't think he does. But if he did this would be the time to use them. Because right now, there is a massive wreck field in front of his base, and he'd get a ton of units for free. Oh, right, sorry. Cybernet Pony pointing out that the explosion there was caused by the Scuttle, which is basically the jump bot answer to the Roach. Forgot about that. And Anarchy is going for puppies! Wonderful! So we do see the puppies where they will become more useful. Because you can get free puppies from the Reclaim. Well, not quite free. I mean, the Reclaim resources go into puppies directly rather than having to be funneled through your resources and then into the factory. But yeah, we shall see a lot of puppies coming through here, and that's probably going to be one more fight from here at this point. I mean, Lowry going for heavy... He is getting a Reaper. Okay, now a bit more normal. And heavy Kodachi usage, which is going to not... It's not going to work out well for these puppies if they're not careful. However, there are a lot of puppies. 28 and growing fast. Actually, 41 and growing fast. Yeah, like I said, growing fast being the operative term here. 46 and the battle is joined. Sumo being the target of most of the attacks. A couple of or a Lotus is in the way to try to stop this. Puppy's doing what they can, but not able to get any shots. The Sumo, however, 
is definitely dealing the majority of the damage. Puppies now broken through the Lotus and going to be hitting the Kodachis. Hitting the Flames, though, a lot of the puppies are going up in flames and not surviving to tell the tale, which is not surprising at all. Like I said, this is where the Kodachi is very effective. The puppies need to just rush forward, deal with damage they can, and they are, because they only have a few seconds to live once they go through that fire. And very few of them getting past, but enough do to break the north side. At this point, Anarchy can take the entire north side if he likes. He might be going for the kill, but I think he's probably got to try to get himself into a better position economically. I mean, the fact that the puppies did have the reclaim field is nice and really helped push this out. But now that he's broken the north side, he's probably consolidated a bit. He does have a Freaker up here, that's good. That's exactly what he needs to do. Maybe get a couple turrets as well, just to avoid a break. And Zuma gonna be jumping on these Reapers to get rid of them, and will it succeed? Well, it it jumps on them. I mean, yeah, it hits them, that's for sure, but it doesn't quite kill them. Sumo's jump only deals a thousand damage, so the puppies are gonna have to finish this off. And there's a lot of puppies, but it's not quite enough. Oh! Nice puppy shot on the shadow there! I mean... Obviously, in 0k, so TA-based games in general, you should not be surprised when something on the ground that doesn't necessarily have an anti-air attack hits the air. Targeting restrictions are pretty loose in 0k especially, but still, that was a nice snipe there. I mean, admittedly, probably unintentionally, but still. Another puppy attack there, and the bomb is released, so that shadow does get lucky, does get a shot off, but still. One fewer shadow. The sumo remains alive when otherwise it would have been... Still alive, but slightly closer to death. It would have been at one sixth health in the one instead of one fifth health. Not the biggest difference in the world. That's the thing with these big utility units is that they are kind of hard to kill with repair. Down go two more welders. Lowry losing his control pretty quickly of the map. The south side does have a stinger. He does have it pretty well consolidated, but even then, Anarchy is slowly inching in on it. But at the same time. Loud and moving forward from the north with his Reapers. He does have a lot of metal in here. Both players have basically been spending a good amount of time on their macro. They've been doing well with that. And Anarchy going to get rid of another Reaper. Ouch, that's a lot of reclaims going to go into puppies. A lot of new puppies going to come from that reclaim. Although, he's got to be careful because he is starting to burn a lot of them into puppies that have no chance to survive before they manage to reproduce. So that's not in the best spot for a wreck. Sumo up to about a quarter health, and Vamp's coming in here to get rid of the shadows. Should have pointed out that air switch beforehand, but yes, there's an air switch. Both players have gone for an air switch. But I think that Anarchid is going to have the upper hand in this one, just because he does have the dedicated anti-air. Two Reapers go down there. That is huge. Two of the Reapers have gone down. It's a little... Okay, one of the Reapers has gone down. The other one is pretty close, but still, that is not a small deal. A bunch of Freakers coming in to try to help out here. They do have slow beams, but they don't actually deal damage with them. They're just slowing, not disruptor beams. They don't actually deal damage at the same time. The Sumo, however, is finishing off the Kodachis as well, and the Reapers doing what they can to repair before they inevitably burn to death, keeping that Sumo alive, sacrificing their lives for it. Valiant, honorable Freakers, which actually, I think is actually kind of silly, but honestly, in this case, that doesn't matter. The Sumo needs to live because it is much more expensive. And the Puppies now have a reclaim field to work with. And this is going to be a lot of puppies. I think this is going to do it if... That is, if Lowry isn't careful... Sorry, Anakin isn't careful. Anakin losing a lot of puppies here. All of his puppies go down. A bunch of them are going to try to reproduce, but they are not going to be able to do so. More coming in, but... These flames here, that... That line of napalm was very cleverly thrown in there by... Or very expertly thrown in there by Lowry. Nicely done. Getting rid of... He got rid of about a dozen puppies there. Still, many more are coming in and are reproducing from this whole wreck field. Anarchy, I'm not sure if he's going to try to reclaim this at the same time. I don't think so. It looks like he's going purely for repair. And another Napalm Strike. Not quite as well placed, though. So Lowry does end up killing about half a dozen of the puppies, but they still are able to reproduce quite effectively. A lot of the reclaim has gone to them. There are currently 27 puppies, by the way. That's... How many... Okay, 410 damage each. So that's getting close to 12,000 damage. That's enough to kill a Goliath in one go if they all hit. Copperheads are a different story. Only about three of them needed to kill one Copperhead, but... This Sumo is doing a wonderful job thanks to the Freakers. Thanks to the dedicated hard work and sacrifice of these Freakers. And that's a lot of Freakers that Anarchy is building, which of course he should. Support for that Sumo. However, the south side, some Shadows are trying to get rid of Lowry's Commander. They're going to succeed, by the way, too. Lowry's Commander is going to go down right now. That is his Commander dead. That is it. So, Lowry loses his Commander. Not the biggest deal at this stage in the game, but does mean that the south side has nothing building it up. There's only the Stinger, and that's about it. 
Everything else has been dedicated to the north side or is in his base. All, it looks like all 18 of his welders are inside of his base, actually, and that means the south side is right for the picking for Anarchid, but he is going to start from the north side. It looks like he's just going to go for the kill. He is sick this game. He is sick of trying to work this through, and he's just going to finish it off. He's got his puppies. He has his 57 puppies. And they will kill everything in their path. Well, that is the sumo. Sumo stomps on it first. And the puppy swarm man. If the sumo takes all the damage, because the sumo has been fully healed up. And here come the puppies. Swarm up puppies coming in here. Despite all the fire, the puppies still get through. And still manage to get rid of basically the entire army here. With the sumo finishing off the rest. And this is game. Anarchid wins from this. I mean, he kind of won before the puppies coming in. But I'd say that Lowry did have a chance. Just the Napalm Bombers were a good move. But I think... Ultimately, he didn't manage to get it enough. Admittedly, part of that is just the fact that he can't easily get rid of a reclaim field. He had to reclaim it himself, and he needed to get territory control. But Anarchid has the game now. It's his game to lose, at least. Lowry has not quite thrown in the towel. But at this point, Anarchid has a sumo right in front of Lowry's base, just killing everything in front of it. Freakers will be coming in to heal it up pretty soon. A caretaker in place to heal it up or to reclaim either way. And puppies as well, which at this point... They have the entire map basically to themselves. They can just take everything. There's nothing mobile at the south side. There's nothing in the north that's going to take him. It's going to take him on at all. So yeah, Anarchid has this, and just going in with shadows, try to finish it off a bit. At any rate, the sumo just getting healed up first. I'm a bit surprised Anarchid is not quite going for the kill, but he has consolidated everything. Why is he not taking this south then? The way he's playing, it looks like he's going for consolidation right before he goes for the kill, just to make sure. But if he's doing that, why is he not taking this out and reclaim or claiming all of these metal patches? I mean, he has the bombers for it. He could take out the stinger. The stinger's not damaged yet. And another sumo's coming in as well, but it looks like Jack's coming in for support. Puppies are going to the north. They won't be able to do much damage, but no, nobody will do any damage. Let me correct myself there. There are still a f none left. There are no puppies left, by the way. More are likely to be produced pretty soon, but none of the moment. This shadow, sorry, this sumo is almost done. These are the shadows right here. Doing what they can, getting rid of the laser turrets. At this point, it looks like Anarchid is going more for fringe attacks. He's not confident to go for the kill. And I can't say I blame him. Another Goliath is actually coming up. And while I can't say I blame him, I also don't necessarily think it's the best choice. Right now, the main base is actually really vulnerable. He's not aware of this, but... It is very vulnerable, and this Goliath is under production if... It... Oh, if all those puppies had come in here, I mean, the Stinger would have killed one of them, but only one, and the rest of them would have been able to kill off this Goliath under production. And viewers pointing on chat that Dante would be the best choice right now for probably either player, really. But neither one really wants to go for a Strider Switch. I don't think Strider Switches are that common. I mean, I've seen them in 1v1 from time to time, but... It, I've gotten the impression that most players don't really think about the fact that striders exist. Is that striders are... I mean, they are a late game unit, and it is late game. It's 22 minutes into the game. This is a pretty late game. But I think that both players have forgotten that they exist, and are just wanting to push out their major utility unit from each factory. They want to push out the Goliath, they want to push out the Sumo. They forget that they have Dantes and Detriments and Ultimatums and whatever else that they have in the Strider factory. They just... They want the big unit here. However, that is, well, that looks like that's how the game's going to go. I mean, we do have the puppies now coming in here. Are they going to take out the factory in time? Nine seconds left. Man, the factory goes down. The Goliath goes down before it's produced. And Lowry throws in the towel from that. And that is game. Hope you enjoyed that. And I will have another one for you guys shortly. So stay tuned. Oh, actually, pointing out in chat that the sumo itself actually does in fact, morph into a Dante. That's why they're pointing that out, because the Sumo has enough experience to morph into a Dante. Wouldn't even need a Strider Hub to begin with. That's a good point. I'll, actually, I'm a little surprised we don't see morph as much, because we did see it last time. I mean, on Saturday, I casted several games that had morphs going on, and calm morphs up to level 3 and 4. It was bizarre. But it looks like this first game is a bit more conservative, and we'll see if that continues, but stay tuned for that.